Welcome back to another SCBWI featured illustrator interview. My name is Tamika Grooms and I'm the design and illustration manager for SCBWI. This month, I'm interviewing Matthew Rivera, illustrator of several children's books about emotions, animated animals with lots of antics, and characters who have odd appetites. Matthew, welcome and congratulations on being this month's featured illustrator. Tamika, thank you so much. I'm honored and I'm, I'm just thrilled to be featured for uh, January. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been watching your work for a little while, and um, I know that you have had several awards with SCBWI, but I want to hop right into your portfolio because we're going to talk about all of that. Um, let's hop over to your portfolio. I'm going to share my screen really quickly. Can you tell me a little bit about what inspires your work um, so that, you know, people can kind of understand, you know, what, what's, what's your inspiration? Um, well, I'm, I'm hugely inspired by animals in nature. Um, I do a lot of garden illustration. I do a lot of like, um, uh, I've done a lot, of, a lot of like, I've illustrated a lot of flowers and plants and, uh, but animals are, are a big one for me. Um, I'm a huge animal lover. Um, I have been since I was a child. Um, I especially love elephants and giraffes and rabbits and bears and squirrels. So I illustrate <laughs> a lot of uh, those critters. Um, and um, I love being in nature. I love hiking. Um, that's one thing I love about living in Portland. I'm like 10 or 15 minutes away from nature. Um, and uh, I, it's just, that's what I love to draw. I also love, I mean, I also love drawing children. I love going to parks and sketching children while they play. Um, and um, I'm inspired by um, all the colors I find in nature. Um, a big fun fact for me for to share actually is that I'm colorblind. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, color for me is, it's, it has to be really vibrant in order for me to see it. So that's why you see a lot of that in my work. Gotcha. That's really interesting. And I, and I wonder how artists deal with that because you're not the only one. Um, but I, that's really one of the things that I love the most about your work is how you use color. Um, so, so I think that is definitely working to your advantage. Thank you. um, um, I want to hop over to the picture that we are featuring today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really love this one. Um, and not because it's Star Wars, but because it's Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but also because how you're, you know, all the characters that you have, um, each one of them has their own personality. Each one of them is interacting with the movies and being in the movie theater. Um, you know, they're having their own experience. So I really love this one. And I'm so happy that you allowed us to, you know, use it for this month. So thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Um, I'm a 70s child, so I remember going to see Star Wars when I was five years old, when it came out in theaters. Um, I, and I, I just loved the whole series. Um, but I, I wanted to do a piece based on Star Wars that really featured how children respond to the film. Um, so I, I came up with this idea and um, like you have all the different kids interacting with each other and interacting with, with the movie itself, uh, shouting and yelling and hooting. <laughs> um, and then my personal favorite is the sort of teenage babysitter up in the top left corner. It was just kind of bored with the whole experience. So, um, you know, I, I try to feature, I try to add all kinds of little details um, into uh, artwork when I'm, when I'm creating an illustration things that children um, or even adults won't see the first time they they have a look but then you know the closer they inspect it you see all these other little little things uh, each time all these little moments um, like the kid in the um, helmet on the far right who's annoyed with the other child uh, standing in, in front of him and um, and, you know, I just, again, I, I just like to add as much into an illustration as possible that, that tells a story. And, and you're absolutely right. I, there's things that I didn't notice until you just called my attention to it um, just now. Um, and I've seen this image several times over the past few months because we've been watching, well, I've been watching your work for the past few months. So, um, so yeah, it's really, it's really interesting how you, you're, you're hiding things and there's, there's a lot to see here 
even though it's just children with costumes on in a movie theater. Yeah, and I have one other side note too is I, I love making costumes. Like I love making things out of cardboard to wear for Halloween and stuff. So I, so I felt like I needed to incorporate that into this illustration. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, I have another question. You you told us the, about how you like to use animals in your artwork. Um, and I think your about page said that you sponsored a, an, an elephant. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With the... Um, uh, the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust in Africa. Um, it's an elephant orphanage. Um, it's pretty well known these days, but uh, you, know, you can adopt an elephant for um, uh, a certain amount each year. So I've done that for, I've been doing this for like the past seven or eight years where I have, I, I sponsor a couple of orphans. Uh, my, my dream my, on my bucket list is actually to go and volunteer someday uh, for like uh, a month. Um, but I, like I said, like was, a, elephants are probably um, my my favorite animal. Yeah, very cool. Well, I love your work, um, and it's also another thing that I noticed. You have lots of owls, and you know that this is oh, the yeah. owl is, is our new um, icon, oh, right. SCBWI. And I noticed you got a lot of them. So, um, and that was not that's not why we chose you. But anyway, <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> Um, I, I'm, I'm also noticing some Eric Carl influences. Um, is that somebody that has influenced your work as well? Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm an Eric Carl fan. Um, and some people have actually, like when I started out, um, some people actually compared my, my work to Eric Carl, but I, it's sort of like my, the way I work and my process is, um, I draw everything in Adobe Illustrator. Um, and then I do what they call masking. So all of the shapes that you see are actually built in Adobe Illustrator and I drop my watercolors and textures. So it's sort of like um, someone described my style as Eric Carl, uh, if he used Adobe Illustrator instead of scissors. Um, so that's, uh, I mean, it's, it's I, I totally um, see why people think that and, uh, and I'm, Definitely not mad about it. So, <laughs> yeah. um, I love Eric Carl's work. Um, he is he's been an influence for sure. Yeah. Uh, do you use a, a mix of traditional and digital work as well? Like yeah, you're creating um, the textures yourself. So, like I, I paint swatches of color, and then I scan all of these in, uh, and I basically drop these into my Illustrator files. Um, so my Illustrator files are are hugely like made up of masks. Um, but then some scenes that like for big backgrounds and stuff, I actually will paint those. Um, so like um, this is Bussy Flamingo, which I illustrated uh, a couple of years ago. So like this scene, uh, the entire background is painted as it is. And then, but the my shapes were drawn in Adobe Illustrator. And then I just dropped my color into all of these masks. And I've been using Adobe Illustrator since like 1990. Um, so I can actually sometimes, uh, I, I usually sketch, like I sketch in sketchbooks, but sometimes I just start drawing in Adobe Illustrator. Like it's second nature to me. Um, to, for me using Adobe Illustrator is like how some people use a sketch pad. Like I can just start drawing shapes. Um, and then I, I do all of my, all of the line work that you see, like all of the details, like the pencils and stuff. I, I import my Adobe Illustrator file into Photoshop and I have a Cintiq and that's where I do all of my, my pencils and line work is in uh, Photoshop. Wow. It's just a process. And uh, my files are huge. Like I, some of my files uh, that have a lot of detail are in the gigabytes, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it's just how I've worked. No, it's really interesting to talk to different artists about their process, um, and everybody has their process. And, and you know, you see children's illustrations, and sometimes you think it's simple, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. No, no there's no. a process. There's also a lot of things that you have to learn, um, uh, you know, about how to tell a story. So, um, so I, I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, and yeah. especially the size of your files too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I. You know, it's funny. I. I. Um... I also, uh, this is uh, Roxy, The Last Unisaurus Rex. Um, I did two books in this series written by the brilliant um, Eva Chen. And uh, like, like this file 
because there's so many textures and layers and different dinosaurs, like this is one of the biggest files I've ever produced. And I think it was like 1.3 gigabytes or something. So um, it's, you know, it's, it's a process. And, and sometimes I wonder like, uh, would it be easier if I just did it, just drew directly on paper, but you know, this is how I work and I actually get really excited about, um, dropping, I know it sounds really nerdy, but like when I create a shape in Illustrator, like I sort of paint, like I, I'll look kind of eyeball how it may appear when I'm painting my swatches. And then the excitement for me is when um, I find little accidents, like when I drop the, the paint in Adobe Illustrator and it looks different than I imagined, but yet sometimes it comes out better. And I'm like, that's part that I find exciting. So yeah. beautiful surprises. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 Um, so I know you have several books on the market. Um, and you have one that is being it's in pre-order right now. Well, I've done uh I've done eight picture books up to now. I just did one called Laney Dances in the Rain that came out in October. Um, it's with uh, Free Spirit Press, uh Free Spirit Publishers and um publishing. And um I have I have a secret project right now that I can't, it's not announced yet, but it's, it's sort of a, it's a, it's a dream come true, which I'm, I'm working on. And, um, the details of that will be released hopefully within the next couple of months. Um, but it is a, is a book that will come out in 2024. So, uh, that's, that's what I have on my plate. Um, but yeah, I've been, uh, and illustrating books, uh, I got my first contract in like 2018. Um, so it's been a long sort of wavy road <laughs> to get to this point. That's been, I've just been completely um, grateful for the work. And so I love, I love making picture books. What makes you join SCBWI? And I, and I noticed also on your page that you've won several awards um, and honors from SCBW, SCBWI over the past few years. Um, but what made you join? Well, I, I was um, looking to get into children's publishing and I didn't know even where to start. Like I had a corporate job. I was a graphic de graphic designer, um, art director, commercial artist for, oh gosh, like two decades. And I really wanted, some of, some of that was for uh, a toy company where I did a little bit of children's work, you know, art for kids on product and stuff like that. And so I thought, you know, I really, I, I want to go into, I want to make picture books. How do I do that? And so I just started like uh, working on a portfolio, but I didn't know exactly how to crack into the market and crack into the world of publishing. And a friend suggested, um, well, why don't you join, look at SCBWI. And I'm embarrassed to admit this, but it took me almost a good year before I finally made the plunge and jumped in. And even then I just sort of sat back for a while before um, uh, this was in Los Angeles, uh, they announced an illustrator uh, mentorship. So you submit a portfolio and you would be uh, mentored by uh, Deborah Norse Lattimore, who is a, a brilliant writer and illustrator um, who lives in LA. So on a whim I joined, I mean, I, I entered and um, I won. And ever since, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've won a few um, competitions here and there. Um, I won a portfolio honor at uh, SCBWI Summer Conference in 2021, which was a dream come true. Um, but it's funny, looking back in retrospect, it took me a while to really jump into SCBWI and really figure out that it was going to be the place where I was going to start to build a career as an illustrator and writer, um, which I'm, I'm grateful <laughs> I took that plunge. Uh, that was in 2015. I would like for you to share your website in any way that we can um, access you online and learn more about your work um, because you have a lot of wonderful work out there. I would love for people to follow you. Well, thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at uh, Matthew Did It. That's my handle. And then also on Twitter, I'm Yes, Matthew Did It. Um, and I try to keep it very simple. So my website is MatthewDidIt.com. Um, I think uh, it's it's helpful to keep the same handle for all the different um, um, app, apps uh, so people can find me easily. Perfect.
Well, Matthew, thank you so much for being here to share uh, with us your work and, and your process and your story. So I'm so happy you could be here. Thank you. Thank you, Tamika. And again, I really appreciate it. And uh, this is uh, it's, it's such an honor to be featured.